Gentlemen, was the disappearance of MH370 an act of God or an act of man? The disappearance of this aircraft was an act of man. Without any shadow of a doubt, this was controlled by a professional pilot who knew a 777, and he also knows the airspace around this area, and he used them to best effect. If Captain Zahari was intent on committing suicide, why would he fly the plane for another six hours? To make it disappear. Simple as that. He was taking it to a predestination, some place that he had planned to take it, and he flew that six hours to get it there. That's, that's, uh, that's why he took it where he did. Why the strange move around Penang here? The turn around Penang is a very odd uh, turn, which um, I spent a long time thinking about it, for technical reasons. Why has it got three turns instead of one? Why hasn't it gone directly over Penang? Um, eventually, I equated it to a manoeuvre I was doing uh, when I was flying over Australia. Um, when I get to Ayers Rock, I used to ask the air traffic control for three miles right of track due Ayers Rock. And so they'd approve it, and then I'd do a right turn. I'd tell the passengers, if anybody wants to take a look, can do so. And then when we got a beam Ayers Rock, I turned back in a slow turn, just exactly like this. Turn back, let people have a look at Ayers Rock, take some pictures, and then I turn back the other way, back on the route. As we know, now know, um, the captain was from Penang. So your conclusion is that he was having somebody a was looking out the window. A sentimental look at Penang. Yeah, I think somebody was looking out the window during that turn. I can't see any other reason for it to be uh, in that way. The three turns. And not only was it not only was it deliberate, it was pre-planned. I think every manoeuvre, every turn that was made in there was something that was pre-planned before the flight ever left the ground. I think that, that all of this pre-planned, the turn south is pre-planned, the destination is pre-planned, the whole thing is, is carried out according to a very deliberate plan. What, uh, what do we think has happened to the passengers at this point? The thing that, that, that gets discussed the most and probably most people would tend to start to agree with is that at the point where the pilot turned the transponder off and made the turn to go in a different direction that he depressurized the airplane, and which would disable the passengers. They would develop hypoxic conditions. Maybe, maybe they would succumb. Uh, at the very least, they would be uh, uh, incapacitated. And I think that if, if you go down into your deep thoughts, you think that's probably the most likely thing that the pilot would do given his intention to make the airplane disappear and not wanting any interference from the back or any, anybody using cell phones or anybody trying to call people. And is that one of the reasons why we assume that the plane was depressurized because there was no contact? I don't know that we can assume at this point. There's just not enough data. But it's, it's a scenario, it's an incomplete hypothetical when you really look at it. Obviously, it's one that the families of the victims are desperate to know. Yes. Yeah. If I had loved ones on that airplane, I would want it to be true that at the very initiation of this wild ride that this airplane went on, that the pilot depressurized the airplane and eliminated the, the people from the back as, as an issue. There is no reason not to believe that that's what the pilot did because that would be consistent with everything else that the pilot did. And I would be comforted in thinking that that's probably what happened. Do you think there's any chance that if MH370 is ever found, that the narrative around the captain might be different, could change? I think all that we've got sufficient evidence to conclude at the moment is that this event was the result of deliberate action by someone very familiar with a 777 aircraft, a pilot very familiar with a 777 aircraft. We cannot take it any, at this stage further than that. But when you if look we locate the aircraft and find flight recorders, cockpit voice recorder, unless there's been a major effort, which would yeah. be very difficult uh, to destroy them, then you'll get some, some further evidence and you will get some evidence that might help establish what I do not think is yet established, which is questions of intent.